For the past 12 years, I have used Adobe Premiere exclusively for my video editing, but for my last project, I used Final Cut Pro on my brand new MacBook Pro for the very first time, and I learned a lot. I'm trying to think of where I should begin with this video, but this is probably where I should begin. Check this out. This is my finished edited project in Final Cut Pro. And as you can see, I am scrubbing around in this timeline flawlessly. All of this footage was shot at 120 frames per second. It slowed down to 24. Every single clip has effects on it. I think multiple effects, color grading and such. And it scrubs flawlessly. And now let's go over to Premiere. None of this footage has any effects on it whatsoever. It's just 120 frames per second slowed down to 24. And as you can see, as I drag this around, it is not smooth at all. Honestly, this is what I always thought editors had to deal with. Uh, you just had to make proxies if you wanted things to be smooth. And so I've just kind of gotten into the habit. Every single project I do now, I create proxies, even though my video files aren't very big, uh, to get that smooth playback. But Final Cut Pro is able to do it somehow perfectly smoothly even with all these effects added. Now, this performance alone might be enough for many of you watching this right now if you're trying to decide between learning Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro if you're on a Mac. This might be enough for you to just go, man, I'm not even gonna give Adobe a try here. Final Cut Pro just works way better. And certainly when it comes to this type of performance, that is absolutely true. Now you may be wondering, is this performance enough of a reason for me to switch from Premiere over to Final Cut Pro? And the answer at the moment is probably not. Um, there are certainly things that are better with Final Cut Pro than Premiere. There are certain things in Premiere that I like better than Final Cut Pro, and that's probably what this video is going to be about. Um, and you can decide for yourself which is more important for you. I will go ahead and spoil this for you though. If you don't have any experience editing and you're already on a Mac platform, I would highly suggest Final Cut Pro. It's cheaper, it's faster, it's simpler. Um, doing things like adding effects and animations and stuff seems way easier in this than it does in Adobe Premiere. But if you're already accustomed to Adobe Premiere or sometimes you work on Windows, Final Cut Pro is not even going to be an option for you. And so I'm still leaning towards sticking with Adobe Premiere and just using the proxy files. But man, this experience has made this decision much more difficult for me because Final Cut really is so much faster. Now, obviously I could talk for days about how these programs are different, but there is one major difference that you will notice right off the bat, which completely changes the way that I edit in each one of these programs. If I select the select tool here and I grab one of these clips and I move it, and then I drop it, it pushes the other clips out of the way and it fits in between those two clips where I placed it. However, if I move over to Adobe Premiere, I grab this clip here and I drop it right here. As you can see, it eats the clips below it. Now, obviously there are ways to replicate the overwrite or move feature uh, that both of these programs have, but the fact that the select tool, the number one tool that you're going to be using natively does one thing or the other, I found that it completely changes the way that I edit in each of these programs. Now, if I want Premiere to work like Final Cut Pro, I have to hold the command key and then I can move this anywhere I want and it pushes everything out of the way. Now, I rarely edit like that because when projects get really complex and you start moving clips in the middle of a large project, things can get out of sync really easily. And then all of a sudden you might have been editing for an hour and then you go back and realize, oh my gosh, when I made this one edit, everything pushed out of sync and now my music doesn't match, my sound effect doesn't match. There's so many things that can go wrong. So I have taught myself to edit a little bit more manually. And so what I might do is I might grab all of this, move it over. Maybe I'd grab this and move it like that. And then I could click here and ripple delete this out. And then it would suck everything back up together. Or what I might be tempted to do is just go up with it here. And I would keep this on a completely different track like that. And then I could grab this and bring it back and fit it over here just like that. Now, that being said, when I was working in Final Cut here and I have a relatively simple project, I decided to keep all of my video clips 
on one track. And I think this is the first time I've ever edited a video where I just have one line of video clips. Usually I have like seven layers of video clips and my timeline looks like an absolute mess. As you can see, this is super simple. Anybody could open this up and easily tell what's going on here. Obviously, I have all of my video clips here. This long purple line here is an effects layer where I've added a LUT across the board to give uh, my video a look. And then here and here, I've added very simple title effects that I dropped onto the timeline as well. Now, this style of super clean editing and really nice clean timelines is very nice on laptops where you have limited screen real estate. I feel like no matter how big my monitor is, when I'm using Adobe Premiere, it's never big enough. Usually when I'm in the office, I have dual 27 inch 4K monitors and I use Adobe Premiere stretched across both monitors at the exact same time. And even then, I can't fit all the little windows and everything I want open all the time. Now, obviously, this project I'm working on in Final Cut is much smaller than my average project. And I probably only understand about 5% of Final Cut, but there was never a time when I was using this program where I thought like, oh, I just need a bigger screen or whatever. Because I was keeping my timeline so nice and tidy, everything fit really well on this laptop. And for the first time ever, I am finally starting to understand how some people edit professionally on a laptop. It really wasn't that bad. Let's talk about a few of the other things that I really liked about this program before we get into some of the bad. Everything about Final Cut Pro seems simplified over Adobe Premiere, but also many of the options and effects and things that you can do to your footage even though you may not have as many options, the options that you do have feel a little bit more polished and quick and easier to use. Let me give you an example here. Maybe for this first clip I have here, the bride touching her wedding dress, maybe I want to slowly zoom into that shot. In Premiere, what I would have to do is I would have to click on it, go over to edit, I would click here, and then I'd move over here, and then I'd maybe do like 115, and then I would push these keyframes to the front and the back here, and then you could play it back, and you could see it's gonna push in a little bit as I move there. That works fine, it's a little bit slow especially when you compare it to Final Cut here, where all I have to do is click on the crop button and then click on Ken Burns, and then it automatically sets up these start and end points here, and basically I've just clicked done. And if I wanted to edit it further, all I have to do is click on this and I could move where I wanted to begin and where I wanted to end. So if I wanted it to start really wide and then zoom into this part of the hand, I can. And I can just click done and play. And as you can see, it's zooming in towards the top of the hand. One effect that I'm always using is warp stabilizer in Adobe Premiere. It just stabilizes uh, footage that has a bunch of jittery movement in it. And it's kind of a slow process. Again, I have to go over here. I have to find effects. I have to search for warp stabilizer. Uh, it's down here, and then I have to drag it up here to effects. Now here it says warp stabilizer can't be used because I've already slowed down this clip. So what I have to do, I have to hit undo on that, and then I have to right click on this, and then I have to scroll down here, and I have to find nest right here. That's going to make it a nested sequence, and then let's do the entire thing again. I drag that over there. It shows up, now it has to analyze. So you can see it's analyzing right here, 30%. That's uh, giving us the time remaining here, eight seconds. As you can see, this is a very slow process and this clip is like five seconds long. So boom, stabilizing. Okay, so it just finished. The exact same process here in Final Cut Pro. All I have to do is click stabilization right there and it says analyzing and it's done. So once again, you can see way, way faster in Final Cut Pro than it is in Premiere. Now, unless I'm missing something, one thing that seems to be far better in Adobe Premiere than in Final Cut Pro is the uh, color editing, color grading section. Um, if you click up here, you can go to the color board one, and basically you have color, saturation, exposure, and like, that is it. In in Premiere, we have Lumetri Color, which is fantastic. And you can see like how many different options we have 
for color grading and color matching. There's just so many more options in Adobe Premiere and I have become very accustomed to this. And so it was kind of strange going over to Final Cut Pro and feeling extremely limited with what I can do. Now, that being said, this project that I'm working on that I'm going to be releasing in a few days from now was sponsored by Motion VFX and they wanted me to use some of their plugins for Final Cut Pro to make any video I wanted. And so I downloaded two of their plugin packs that work for Final Cut Pro, and these plugins work way better than any plugins I've ever used in Adobe Premiere. Once you install the plugin under effects, these presets show up here, and basically I can just click and drag these effects onto any of my clips, and then it gives you easy options to turn off different parts of these effects. Obviously it has like a letterbox here that I don't want. It's got some lens flare that I don't want, but just check out the difference. And I really haven't done anything at all yet. If I wanna click on this and just add saturation or whatever, boom, I'm done, easy. And then I can play it back and it just plays really smoothly. Now I have noticed after putting an effect on clips and playing things back, it seems like Final Cut Pro is showing me a really low res version of the clip, but boom, now it's high res. So instead of lagging and being slow to play back, it seems to be rendering something in the background, showing you a low res preview while it's rendering, but then after a few seconds, boom, it's high res, and it's high res every time you look at it instantly after that point. The next plugin I tried was called M Wedding, and when you install this, it shows up in the title menu up here, and basically all you have to do is click and drag these different titles onto your timeline, and it will create these animations that look awesome automatically. And then if, if you wanted, for instance, to uh, you know put the couple's name or whatever, I could drag this on this clip here and we can play it back and you can see their names show up here. And all you have to do is click on this title up here and change the name. So I could put Lee and Katie like that. And then when you play it back, it instantly animates the clip automatically. I'm sure there are plugins like this for Premiere. I just have never used them before. And every time I've had to do animations like this, I have to go into Adobe After Effects, which I haven't really learned and it drives me crazy. So what do I do? I just never have animated titles like this. So when I was able to use these plugins that worked super easily, you just drag and drop and change the title. That was awesome for me. Now, as I was trying these plugins, I was just thinking to myself like, oh my gosh, this would have saved me so much time from doing everything manually and trying to figure out After Effects, which I do not understand how to use. Um, I'm just going to get this software and use it with Adobe Premiere but you can't. This software only works with Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve, so I was like, damn, if I wanna use these plugins, I am going to have to switch over to Final Cut Pro. So then you're probably wondering, why in the world won't you switch over to Final Cut Pro? You're making Final Cut Pro sound so much better than Adobe Premiere. And the main reason, and maybe this is something that I just haven't figured out yet, I called my buddy who's been using Final Cut Pro for over a decade now. He told me you just couldn't do it. But my biggest issue is that I want to open multiple video sequences or timelines at the exact same time, and I wanna be able to drag and drop between them. Um, as far as I know, and as far as my friend knew, you can open multiple projects in Final Cut Pro, but you can't open multiple sequences at the same time and like stack them on top of each other and drag from one timeline to another quickly and efficiently. Now, I'm sure what I'm about to say is going to frustrate many of you, and maybe there is a more efficient way to do things, but I feel like I've gotten really fast at editing over the last few years, and I have this system where I usually create like a rough edit, and then I move all of my B-roll to another sequence, and I stack them on top of each other, and then I edit the B-roll separately, and then I drag the edited clips down into a sequence below that's kind of the final timeline. And the reason why I do that is because I like being zoomed in on my timeline to the footage that I'm editing and I'm getting really close and you know nitpicky with, which would be my B-roll at that point in my editing process. But then my overall project that I'm you know setting to the beat of music, I usually like being zoomed out on that. 
and the problem that I have with Final Cut Pro is that I keep having to zoom in and out and in and out to move these clips back and forth on this long timeline and I had hundreds of clips to go through and as I grab one clip far into the future in the timeline and try to move it back to like one minute in on the timeline, I'm losing my place on the right side. And you'd say, well, just zoom out, Lee. But a lot of these clips that I'm editing are like three seconds long. And so if I zoom out long enough to see hours in the timeline, you can't see or grab a three second clip. It just becomes like a pixel sliver and you just can't see it. So I have become accustomed to having two or more timelines in view at all time, zoomed in to different levels so that I can easily jump between them. And my buddy was like, oh yeah, I don't think you can do that in Final Cut Pro. There's absolutely no doubt that things like playback are much smoother in Final Cut Pro unless I do proxies in Premiere, which I do. And there's no doubt that things like stabilization or the Ken Burns effect is faster in Final Cut Pro than in Premiere. But Premiere does warp stabilization in the background and I usually don't wait for it. And yes, making keyframes is slightly slower, but in the grand scheme of things, maybe that's adding just a few minutes to my edit. The process of zooming in and out on this timeline and trying to drag things over and waiting for the timeline to move or like dragging it over just a little bit and then it's zipping over past it and then me having to come back and find the spot that I need. Imagine this when it was hours of footage and I've got these little three second clips and I start sliding over to the right to move it over here and boom, it just, it just jumps an hour to the very beginning of the timeline, but I didn't want it there. I just wanted it right next to whatever's off screen and I don't know why this thing jumps all over the place. So I spent so much time fighting with this timeline and fighting with the zooming in and the zooming out I might be completely wrong, but this project took me 10 hours to edit in Final Cut Pro. I bet you I could have done it in five hours in Premiere just because I'm used to working in Premiere. Now, if there is a way to do this, I apologize. Please let me know in the comments below. I did a long Google search and tried to figure it out. I couldn't figure it out. My buddy who's an expert in Final Cut Pro said he's never known how to do that. He, he doesn't even know why you would want to do that. Hopefully I've done a good job of explaining why I need multiple timelines at the exact same time. Um, I'm sure you Premiere Pro users understand and you Final Cut Pro users probably do not. Now, when it came to exporting this footage out, I was looking for the export button and I couldn't find it anywhere. And then I looked under share and I could see share and then export file is under share. It's kind of a weird place to put it, but okay. And when you click on settings here and you look at the options, there's barely any options at all. It's like, five or six ProRes options. There's an H.264 option, but then there's no way to fine tune this. If I go down to export media in Premiere, take a look at how many different options we have in Premiere. I mean, I can, I can choose tons of different export options. I can choose the bit rate. I can choose if I want a constant bit rate or a variable bit rate. I can choose if I want the variable bit rate to do two passes to make this, the file even smaller. I can choose maximum render quality. I can choose to use proxies or previews that have maybe already been made. None of these options are in Final Cut Pro. And I just thought, well, this is weird. Like if I just choose H.264, how big is the file going to be? I mean, what's the bit rate going to be? And it's little details like this that always drive me crazy with Apple and Apple software. It's like they simplify things so much because they think they know better or something. But then when you need to fine tune something, you literally can't and you have to go to another application. Now, in this case, it's not a huge deal because the video file coming out of this is going to be really high quality. But sometimes you want a low quality, small file type and as far as I know, again, in Final Cut Pro, you just don't have these options, whereas in Adobe programs, you have infinite options. Now, the first time I exported this, I didn't have any effects on the timeline. It was a four minute video and I didn't time it, but I think it exported this video in seconds. I don't know how it did it. I don't know if it's rendering things in the background while I'm editing and then it's ready to go uh, once I actually hit export. But it was like, by the time I navigated to the folder, it was already done. I don't know how it did that. Now, the next export I did was with all of the motion VFX titles and animations and color grades. And that one took a little bit longer, 
But uh, again, I think like a four minute video might have taken two or three minutes to export, which is still insane. This experience hasn't made me fall in love with Final Cut Pro, but it's made me angry at Adobe Premiere. Like, why isn't Adobe Premiere this fast? Why don't plugins work as easily as they do in Final Cut Pro? I don't get it. Why aren't exports this fast? And the biggest one of all, why can't we have smooth scrubbing in Adobe Premiere? Haven't we figured this out yet? Aren't computers and SSDs fast enough to do I mean, obviously it's fast enough because I can do it right here perfectly in Final Cut Pro. I don't understand why it's so bad in Premiere. Even if everything about Final Cut Pro was perfect, I can't switch over to it because all of our computers are Windows machines. This is the only Mac that we own here. And the truth is, Final Cut Pro still isn't perfect anyway. But now that I see what editing programs can be, I'm not happy going back to Premiere either. So basically this entire test has just made me a much more angry person. In conclusion, if you're trying to decide if it's worth checking out Final Cut Pro, I say the answer is absolutely yes. I was not expecting to like this software at all. It has absolutely blown me away. Uh, if you search for Final Cut Pro trial, you can get like a three month trial, which will give you plenty of time to learn how to edit your own videos. And uh, I would highly suggest it. If, if you've never used another program before, give it a try. I think it's much easier to learn this than it is Adobe Premiere. However, that being said, if you're going to work on very complex, long projects, at least right now with what I know, it still seems like the layout of Adobe Premiere is going to work better for that than Final Cut Pro. However, there's a very good chance that there's just another aspect to Final Cut Pro that I still have not yet figured out. And if you guys can tell me what I'm missing and what I can do to work on really long, complex projects, especially grabbing old projects from the past and bringing aspects of them into a new project, let me know in the comments below and uh, I'll do another update video in the future. And if you are using Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve, definitely check out Motion VFX. These are some of the best plugins I have ever used in my entire life. They are very affordable and this website has everything. Check out the link below. Uh, I guarantee if you're looking for some sort of plugin, Motion VFX has it for sure.